at 9 to 8. So now on the mound today for State, Gerangelo Sanja, the ambidextrous pitcher against Mac Bingham to get everything started. Overcast skies today. The temperature going to be in the low 60s, so a little bit cooler day at the ballpark than it was yesterday. Rubber game of this three game series and kick back on the couch and hang out with us for the next few hours. Here on the opening weekend, you can't think of a better way to start SEC play than Mississippi State and LSU. Well, in Mississippi State, a team is trying to rebound. You want to find out where you are early in the season. What better way to find out than playing the defending national champions? One, two, breaking ball down. Bingham homered in yesterday's game. His third home run of the season. Started his career at Arizona, of course. Had a two-run home run in the second inning yesterday. And strike three called at the knees on the outside corner. And so Gerangelo Sanja gets a strikeout to get us started. Well, it seems like Gerangelo's velo just keeps ticking up game after game and 97 at the bottom of the zone. Really tough to do anything there. And a nice job framing that pitch up behind the plate. Uh, Joe Long. And now Tommy White will bat. I have a little equipment issue for our catcher Joe Long having to readjust a few things. Well, Gerangelo Sage of the sophomore from Pembroke Pines, Florida, but originally from the island of Curacao. Now Bulldogs would love to see him go deep in the game, and it's something he's capable of doing. Gerangelo, past couple of times out, has pitched better in the sixth than he was doing in the second and third. Went six innings last week against Evansville, gave up three runs on five hits. Tommy White at the plate. Tommy heating up, beginning to heat up a little bit. Now four home runs. He's hit two this weekend. His solo home run yesterday, a line drive to left field that set the tone for the Tigers in the first inning. Jared Jones had a two-run home run later that inning. LSU, four home runs on the day yesterday, all coming in the first three innings. And to the left side, and David Mershon drawing the start at shortstop, tosses across, and two quick outs in the first. LSU hit three two-run home runs and a solo shot and jumped out to a 9-1 lead in the game yesterday. And then Mississippi State would begin to crawl back in it. Got it back to nine to eight with a couple runs in the seventh inning. Had the runner thrown out at the plate. You saw that in the open. Abani Larry in the seventh. LSU turned a big double play in the eighth inning, started by Tommy White. Oh, a really nice pitch that time. Got it in on the hands and. Nothing Jones could do with that one. Fouls it off, and now Gerangelo ahead. Ackenhausen last night was outstanding in the ninth inning, retired the Bulldogs in order in the ninth. But LSU held on and won it, uh, won it nine to eight. Now, Jones, a dangerous hitter. You don't want to give anything too good over the middle of the plate to him. If you do, it can go a ways. And then a foul tip. Bulldogs have the shift on defensively. Three guys on the left side. And the breaking ball stayed high and inside. And the count's even. Jared Jones was two for four yesterday with a couple of RBIs. One for four in the game on Friday. The 2-2. Two -two. Roll to the left side. And Mershon with a long throw across, and that will end the inning. So Gerangelo Sanja works a clear. 
a little better offensively. You give up a little bit defensively. Well, Tommy White playing off the bag as you would expect here early in the ball game, but this ball's just hit so hard, never really had a chance to make a play at all. And so now David Marchand will bat with a runner at second base. Seventh double of the year for Amani Larry. Back. Just one for nine on the weekend. But that one hit was a double in the seventh inning. Yeah, and you look back at the ball game on Friday, he was only guy in the lineup without a hit, but he scored two runs, finding his way on base. He had a strikeout that he reached on that became a big play. St. Patrick's Day here at the ballpark. The 3 0. And right there. Crowd still filing in, so this one will grow as we get deeper into the game. Three one. The breaking ball. And the third base umpire Ronnie Teague says he can win around. Did he? I well, couldn't tell from that angle. Three two and strike three is called. The backdoor breaking ball that catches the outside corner. And the first out of the first inning and a big strikeout for Thatcher Hurd to get. Yeah, this is a big time pitch for Hurd. After falling behind 3 and 0 just drops that one in. And here's Dakota Jordan. And lifts that ball into shallow right field. Ranging in is Brady Neal playing out in right field today. And there will be no tag. And now all of a sudden, Thatcher Hurd, after giving up the leadoff double, gets a strikeout and a quick fly out to right field, and it leaves it up to Hunter Hines. And Hines won't get a chance. He's going to be sent to first base. So the intentional pass will be given to Hunter Hines and Connor Hyzak, who's back as a regular fixture in the Bulldog lineup will have it fall to him. Isaac has had a four hit weekend. He's four for eight at the plate. He and Logan Kohler have the most hits of any Bulldog on the weekend. First and second, two outs. And a good hard slider. Isaac started his career at VCU, now in his second year here in Starkville. Nailing down a spot out in center field. Breaking ball just missed inside. Gerangelo Sanger worked a quick one, two, three inning in the top half. Thatcher Hurd trying to get out of the bottom of the first. And that's a fair ball inside the bag of third and all the way down to the left field corner. Amani Larry scores. They're going to wave home Hunter Hines. Here comes the throw, and it's not in time. Isaac going to try to get third, and he's in there. And State has a 2 nothing lead. Well, they pitch around Hunter Hines. And the Bulldogs, Connor Isaac delivers. His power is a ball. That's the second ball just hit hard right down the third baseline. Tommy White just couldn't do anything about it, and that one was hit very hard. 107 off the bat. And now Aaron Downs will come to the plate. 
the errant throw. Will allow the runner to get the third, so an error will be on the board. And the breaking ball drops in there for a strike. He charged the error to the shortstop, Braswell, on the relay. And so you go back to the pitch. That was a good pitch that Hyzak hit. It wasn't exactly center cut. It was at the bottom of the zone. And that's a fair ball. That's three in a row right down the line. Downs on his way to second. Here comes a throw. It's not in time. And the third Bulldog double of the first inning in the exact same spot. Well, let's take a look. Jay Johnson's out of the dugout. That's a fair ball. Let's see if LSU wants to challenge it. Scott Klein, the home plate umpire, and they're going to bring in all the umpires. Got a lot of angle to it. Downs with a double to 3 nothing state lead, and here's Logan Kohler. And first pitch swinging pops out one out of the shallow left. Braswell calling for it and gives way to the left fielder, and Pearson makes the catch to end the inning. The Mississippi State, Gerangelo Sanger will pitch with the lead. He'll pitch from the left side for the first time today against Josh Pearson, the LSU left fielder. Pearson two for nine on the weekend, homered in the game on Friday. He was a batting down to the nine hole on Friday, hitting the six spot yesterday and all the way up to the cleanup spot today. Breaking ball, and that's a bunt. That's going to be a nice bunt. Bulldogs had brought the shift around left on left. And Josh Pearson lays down a beauty. Well, that's how you beat a shift. And that is an outstanding bunt. Nobody home. And now Sanger will go back and pitch from the right side. Hayden Travinsky, the catcher, the batter. Skies that one into center field, and Hyzak ranging under it. He'll make the catch for out number one. Well, for LSU fans tuning in and watching Gerangelo Sancha for the first time, he's a right-hander that throws 96-97. From the left side, he can touch 92-93. But primarily, he'll throw from the right side. Drafted by the Milwaukee Brewers before getting to Starkville, more or less as a shortstop. Jay Johnson asking for an offensive conference. And Jay's traditional West Coast style of guy, likes to slow the things things down a good bit. He'll have a lot of conferences. He'll take his time. He's done a remarkable job down in Baton Rouge now in his third season. Out into center field again as Brady Neal first pitch swinging. And got under it. Isaac hauls it in, and that's out number two. Yeah, you say that, Bart, about the job he's done at LSU. He's done a good job everywhere he's been. Jay Johnson is... On a lot of baseball games. Yeah, I think back to 2016 with Charlie, our good friend Greg Byrne, who's now the athletic director over at Alabama. Of course, Greg was here at State as the athletic director. And talking to Greg back in 2016, he was like, man, I really like the baseball coach we just hired from Nevada. And I was out at Arizona. Jay Johnson was great at Nevada, then very good at Arizona. Took that 16 team all the way to the finals. And then he won it last year at LSU. Of course, Bobby Dahl back helped him look good. <laughs> Had a really good third baseman slash pitcher that came in here in 2016 in the Super Regional when State was a national seed. 2-0. In the air, left side of the infield, Stephen Milam hits it a mile high 
And Mershon is there to haul it in. First inning from Amani Larry, Connor Hyzak, and then Aaron Downs. All just past the third base bag. And lead it 3-0. Here's Bryce Chance to lead off the Bulldog designated hitter. And first pitch swinging sends that one in the air in the right field. And Brady Neal camps out under it. Lazy fly balls here in the second inning. LSU hit a couple fly balls out to the outfield and then a pop-up. And Bryce Chance first pitch swinging the same to right field. And that's out number one. We see Brady Neal playing out in right today. And just an embarrassment of riches at catcher for LSU. And think about Neal, gives you a day to rest the legs a little bit. Travinsky behind the plate today. Here's Johnny Long in first pitch swinging. He hits that one a mile high in the air. That's contagious. Well, old adult softball league game breaking out right now. So top of the order for the Bulldogs, Samani Larry. Mila made the play. Larry had that double that got things started in the first inning for the Bulldogs. Later came around to score the first run. The first of three doubles right down the third baseline. That pitch just missed outside. And I want to say this because, Bart, you and I talked about this yesterday as we were watching the game. None of those doubles were preventable by Tommy White. He they were just hit really hard right down the line. And I think of all the things that have impressed me this weekend, it has been how good he has been defensively at third base. Well, everybody in the country in college baseball has known what he can do at the plate, but he has gotten so much better at third base. There's a breaking ball that stayed inside. Made a tough play on an in-between hop in the game on Friday. Yesterday, turned a big double play late in the game in the eighth to keep LSU out in front by a run. And now three and one to Amani Larry. You know, last year, fielding percentage of 859. Hasn't made an error this season. 3-1. And he misses inside with a fastball, and the inning stays alive for David Mershon. So a two-out walk issued by Thatcher Hurd. In the book is the second walk of the day for Thatcher Hurd. Of course, they walked Hunter Hines with two outs in the first inning intentionally. Mershon struck out looking his first time up. That one just off the plate outside. And, you know, you'd have to think here that Mershon's going to get a pitch to hit. The last thing Hurd wants to do is put a pair of guys aboard and give Dakota Jordan a chance to swing it. It's a good fastball inside part of the plate. So it goes away and then comes inside. Mershon had a red hot start after entering the lineup. He was out the first couple of weeks of the season with a hamstring pull. And then once he got in the lineup, he started out red hot, batting over 500 for a while. He's batting 355 now. It's cooled off just a tad. Lines it the other way and is slicing down in the Mississippi State bullpen down in the corner. And the count now two and two. Monty Larry, three of five in stolen bases on the season. Of course, one of those where he was caught stealing was really more of an effort to run on a pitch that was down. 
It wasn't the classic straight steal. Seemed like Bulldogs were bitten by that problem against Air Force. And he'll be moving on this pitch, three and two with two outs. There he goes. And strike three called, and that will end the inning. So Mershon strikes here at the ballpark today. First pitch swinging, Kohler feels it, throws it across in time for the out. Ashton Larson drawing the start as a DH today. First pitch swinging. Both teams out swinging early in counts. And Charlie, you and I had several talks a couple years ago with Skip Bertman, longtime coach at LSU. And he was laughing about Ron Polk and the relationship of those two guys, Ron Polk and Skip Bertman, dating all the way back to their days in Miami. We were talking about how a church league softball game was opening up last inning with all the pop-ups, and that's that's how those guys got going. That's how the friendship began back in the 1970s down in Miami. A soft line drive and over the glove of Mershon and into left field and. Michael Braswell with a single to left field. And so a one out single and it turns over the lineup. But you you think back to the early 1970s and how college baseball was really big down in Coral Gables at the University of Miami. Ron Frazier was a longtime head coach and Ron Polk was an assistant coach for Ron Frazier down at Miami and then took the job at Georgia Southern. Went to Georgia Southern. Took Georgia Southern to the College World Series in 1973. And then took the took the job back at Miami in his old job as an assistant coach. In the fall of 1974. And then in the Late fall, Mississippi State began looking for a coach, and they went to Ron Polk. They brought him here, and it was late in the year. And Ron Frazier says, hey, you're not taking that job unless you can find someone to replace yourself, your position here at Miami. And so he thought about, who can I get to take the assistant job? And he thought about a guy that he played churchly or played an adult men's softball league in Miami. And he was a good friend of Skip Burtman. Skip Burtman was the first baseman on the softball team. Ron Polk was the shortstop. And Skip Burtman was a longtime high school coach in the Miami area. And at the time says, you know what, I really don't want to get into college coaching. I want to stay in the high school ranks. And Ron Polk kind of stayed after him a little bit and then Skip Bertman says okay. Then he became the assistant coach at Miami replacing Ron Polk. Ron Polk came to start well, a few years later Skip Bertman went to LSU and in the history is made out in the outfield Heizak running it down in left center field. And that's out number two. What a play by Heizak. Well he has to go get this ball. This ball was hit at 102 off the bat, and Heizak gets a good jump, has a beat on it the entire way. He wasn't even looking for the wall. He was just running full speed. And now two outs in the inning, and here's Tommy White. But anyway, to finish the story, two of the godfathers of SEC baseball, the all got started on a softball field in Miami, Florida, in an adult men's softball league. Well, and many around the SEC probably still hold a grudge for Ron Polk because of that. Big swing from Tommy White. Skip Bergman came in here and won a lot of games and championships. Now, he's just great to talk to. You get those two together. And some good times visiting with them. And through the left side, that's a base hit from Tommy White. Two hits in the inning, and the inning stays alive for Jared Jones. And that was the thing that we were talking to Skip Bertman a couple years ago. We were like, hey, Ron Polk said you're a pretty good first baseman. And he started laughing. And he says, you know, Polk, he could pick it out of shortstop. Two longtime friends and 
Well, we're going to have a visit to the mound because after that base hit by Tommy White, things get interesting here because a big swing of the bat and Bulldogs momentum could be erased. And you got a guy at the plate who can hit it a long ways. Jared Jones has seven home runs on the year. And fastball high. Jones grounded out to the shortstop his first time up. Bulldogs have the shift on. And now down and away. Well, he came inside with a breaking ball and fouled off. And the count goes two and one. A spot here where obviously Sanja doesn't want to issue a walk and load the bases, but with Jones up, there are worse fates. Big swing at the slider, and, and that's now a, the count's two and two. Yeah, and that's a well-executed pitch right there by Sanja. He tunnels so well against his fastball. Swing and a miss, and that will end the inning. And some emotion from a Gerangelo Sanja. Third inning with be Dakota Jordan, Hunter Hines, and Connor Hyzak. Three, four, five in a Bulldog order. Jordan with a fly out the right field, first pitch swinging his first time up. Nine home runs on the season for Dakota Jordan. He had five home runs in five days or five games. That was stopped on Wednesday night. Reigning SEC player of the week. Homer in five straight games. Heard way out in front, 0 2 right here. They missed a spot. And now 1 and 2. Now a one-two pitch, that's not a bad pitch at all. Early in the season, particularly, Dakota Jordan had trouble chasing pitches like that. Here's a two-two. And the breaking ball stays low. And now the count full. So after starting out 0-2, Thatcher Hurd, he missed that spot on the 0-2 pitch. And now has been down with back-to-back -back breaking balls. And let's see what he does on 3-2. Breaking ball, grounded left side. Braswell up with it and toss it across. It's a nice stretch over there by Jared Jones, and that's the first out of the third. So Dakota Jordan rolls out to the left side. Let's see, home plate umpire is going to talk with Dakota Jordan. And they're having a fairly extended discussion. And now Chris Lamos is going to walk out. And I missed. I did not see if any discussion was taking place or words back and forth or anything like that. Well, we had a little jawing on Friday. Hmm. Well, I don't know. 
unless there is more to the story. There usually is. Hunter Hines will bat. He was walked his first time up. And a breaking ball. Able to check the swing and it counts one and one. Hines given the intentional walk in the first. Had first base open with two outs. Try to catch the outside corner and just missed. And so far, that may have been the at bat so far. The game is LSU electing to give the intentional pass to Hunter Hines and Isaac, who's been hot this weekend, drove in a pair with a double. And now the count two and two. He heard the good looking fastball at the bottom of the zone. Betty goes back breaking pitch here. Let's see. And he does and fended off that time by Hunter Hines. You know, Hurd's thrown some breaking pitches in this game that probably look to the crowd as if they're very low, but they're breaking so hard, they're actually crossing the plate just south of the strike zone. Swing and a miss, the fastball down. And quickly two outs in the third. The fastball had some sink to it. Third strikeout for Thatcher Hurd and two quick outs in the third inning. And Connor Heizak will bat. And that one back to the screen. <laughs> Under it and popped out to shallow right field. Over to get it, the second baseman Milam, and the freshman squeezes it to make the play. And a quick one two third by Braswell and Tommy White. And the first pitch is in there for a strike. Pearson's first time up, he laid down a bunt against the shift, right where the third baseman is standing right now. And that ball soft liner into left field. That's a base hit. Went the other way with it. Nice piece of hitting by Pearson. Got it just over the outstretched glove of David Mershon. That's a couple of those today for LSU. And the leadoff man aboard in the fourth inning. And that's the fourth hit of the day for LSU. And Hayden Travinsky will bat. Stravinsky with a fly out to center field his first time up. Three hits and nine at bats on the weekend. Well, he ran the fastball up and in that time. Homer to the game yesterday. Swing and a miss at the 97 mile an hour fastball. And the third strikeout of the day for Gerangelo Sanja. Now, Sanja has done a really good job keeping LSU hitters off balance. He's mixed up the fastball and the breaking pitch. You saw a good slider, and then you followed it up with a high fastball. Now, we're going to have a visit to the mound here. Bulldog pitching coach Justin Parker going to go out and have a word against a particular batter. And that's what he's going to do right here. Turn around and well, pitch from the left side. Well, we'll see because Jay Johnson is coming out of the dugout. 
and is having a discussion because Gerangelo, as Neal was coming to the plate, he was standing on the mound, holding the ball in his right hand with his glove on his left. And what Jay Johnson is saying, wait a minute, the pitcher has to declare which side he's going to throw from. He declared. Now, Now, of course, there was a visit to the mound. And he had never engaged, I think, is the thing. He had never towed the rubber. You know, there was that great series when Pat Vendetti was playing in the minor leagues. Yep. And Pat McMahon was actually coaching that team. It was the Staten Island Yankees. And you had a switch hitter at the plate. You had a switch pitcher. And they just kept flipping sides on each other. But the rule is that the pitcher has to declare. The 0-1. Breaking ball and is fouled off. Now, what constitutes declaring? And it's another that, page in the rule book there. Yeah, and I think that's what Jay was saying right there is hey, he was standing before the visit, he was standing on the mound with the, the ball in the right hand, and that's the whole question. Is that does that constitute declaring? Swing nice. and a miss. And that's out number two. Well, and there you see with Sanja, whereas from the right-handed side you see the power arm and you see the hard slider. What you get with Sanja from the left side is dialed down a little bit, 84 with a sweeper that time. And so Gerangelo looks in now and says, hey, I'm going to throw right-handed. <laughs> well, of course, you've got a guy here with Milam who's a switch hitter. So. Right. And there's a fastball over the inside corner, strike one to Milam. Stephen Milam popped out to the shortstop his first time up. And this one in the air and should get out of play and will. And in that situation, so what you saw, Gerangelo motion, I'm going to throw from the right side. The pitcher declares. And then the hitter will declare. 0-2. Almost thrown away over at first. Hunter Hines having to make a nice play. And we've talked about the way this park sets up. An overthrow from second base is typically not going to allow the runner to take anything extra. An errant pickoff throw, and the guy's going to run a while. Runner goes. And sprayed the other way and down the left field side. And that will head down to the Paxton Berm. One, two, way upstairs. Over through that one, and now the count's even. So a runner at first, that's Josh Pearson. He let off the inning with a single. Sanger with strikeouts of Travinsky and Brady Neal. And two, two to Milam. Swing and a miss, and that will end the inning. So Sanger, after giving up the leadoff single, strikes out the next three. We go to the bounce. Who drove in a run with a double his first time up, granted the ball just inside the third base bag. And Charlie Thatcher Hurd, it hasn't been just a slider. He's got a good breaking ball. It's kind of a 12 to sixer as well. So a three pitch mix that has been very good. And he has gotten much better in the second and then the third innings. Well, it speaks to the experience, right? Able to 
take a little adversity and set it aside and come back throwing much better. Hot shot, backhand pick by Tommy White and a throw across. And Tommy White continues to be outstanding at third base this weekend as Downs hits a seed glove side. <laughs> Downs hits this ball 109. It is scalded, and look at that. Uh, backhand side made that play and able to toss it across. And the leadoff man retired in the fourth. Man, the leap he has made defensively from a year ago is just astonishing. And here's Logan Kohler. Ground ball just inside the bag at first and picked out by Jared Jones. He'll step on the bag and a couple well hit balls right down the lines here <laughs> well, in the fourth inning. And two quick outs. After the first inning, LSU decides let's just guard the lines. A nice job by Jared Jones, the first baseman. And two quick outs. Bryce Chance with a fly out the right field, his first time up. So quickly, 0-2. Hurd has retired nine of the last ten batters. The only one to reach base was Amani Larry with a two-out walk in the second. He's retired six in a row right now. Overcast skies at the ballpark. A little bit cooler than it was yesterday. That great weather, great crowd in yesterday's game. Well, fended off that breaking ball. The count remains one and two. Well, that's the thing Bryce Chance can do. He can spoil some pitches, and that's all he was doing right there. Well, that's a tough one to fight off. And chop to the left side, easy hop for Braswell. We'll toss it over in time for the out, and that will end the inning. So Thatcher Heard with back-to-back -back one, two, three innings. Top of the seventh inning. Here's Larson, the first pitch swinging back in the third inning, grounded out to the third baseman, Logan Kohler. We talked about the job Tommy White's done. Larson hit a ball hard, and Logan Kohler made a really nice play. Sanja threw four innings, 55 pitches, 39 strikes. Fastball had some movement to it, ran it away. Now the count two and two. Larson, a big time freshman from Overland Park, Kansas. And a count now three and two. Yeah, Milam and Larson outside back, back. And a leadoff walk in the fifth inning. And that will bring Michael Braswell to the plate. He had a single to left field back in the third inning.
That ball hit well in the right center field. It's going to split the outfielders. Get all the way to the wall. Larson will be waved around third, and here comes a throw to the plate, and it is not in time. And an RBI double for Michael Braswell. Larson scores from first, and LSU is on the board in the fifth. Well, ball catches a lot of the middle of the plate. Just going the other way with it, splitting the outfielders, and let's see. Yep, got in there. And now Mac Bingham will bat. So it's the eight and nine hole hitters, the leadoff walk to the eight hole hitter Larson who comes around to score. Bingham 0 for 2, struck out looking in the first, a fly out to center field in the third. Well, the check down at first. Joe Harris says he went. And now 0-2 to Bingham. And fouled it back. The 0-2. We'll try to throw the fastball by him at 97. That one caught a lot of plate on 0-2. Yeah, went middle, middle there. A little higher in the zone the pitch before. Breaking ball and a diving roll. Stretched out play by Kohler. He kept his feet. He reached out and snagged it out of the air. That ball was scalded by Bingham. Boy, how about the third base play today? And now Tommy White will bat with a runner at second and one out. And they'll put him on here. So the tying runs aboard now, and Jared Jones will come to the plate. Uh, we saw earlier in the ball game where Mississippi State in the bottom of the first inning. First base was open. They elect to put Hunter Hines on and pitch to Isaac, and he comes through. And Jones, a guy at the plate who can really swing it. Of course, you set up the double play opportunity. The shift is on. That makes the double play a tough thing to pull. Jones with a ground out to short in the first. He struck out swinging to end the third. You see that shift. Second baseman Amani Larry. On a ball to the left side, he'd have to get to the base and then get oriented. Seven home runs on the season for Jones. And now it's three and one. So after the intentional walk, Sanja in danger of walking the next guy unintentionally. And that's what he did. And the bases are loaded. Three walks in the inning, one intentional. And now the bases are loaded with one out and Josh Pearson coming to the plate. Yeah, I think we'll see a visit to the mound here. Pearson two for two. Justin Parker back out. Bulldog pitching coach. So four straight balls to Jones after starting him with a strike. Yeah. 
That was a big cut by Pearson. Couple of hits in the ball game. He's got a pair of singles. Single here would probably tie this thing up. Starts him off with a change up. Here's the 0 1. Comes right back with fastball. Big moment in the game right here. Swing and a miss, and a big strikeout for Durangelo Sanchez. And now two outs for Hayden Travinsky. Well, after the changeup, Sanchez is just pumping fastballs. Got the chase that time. Travinsky 0 for 2, a fly out, and a strikeout. Ooh, took the high heater inside. And chop foul. RBI double in the inning by Michael Braswell. Bases loaded, the 1 1. Reach back, got a little bit more that time. And now a big pitch, one and two coming. And try to go up a little bit higher. Been 96, 97 all day, the last two at 98. 2-2. Two, two. Oh, boy. Just missed the outside corner. They that just missed. Just a ball off the plate. Just outside, and now runners will be moving on the pitch on the 3 2. And that one just below the zone and ball four. And that will walk in a run to make it a 3 2 game. Now, good job of receiving by the catcher along that time. Scott Klein not willing to go along with it. And now a 3-2 game. Base is still loaded. And Brady Neal struck out swinging his last time up. Well, four walks in the inning. And the first walks of the day by Gerangelo here in the fifth. 3-2 game. And now 2-0. But uh, right now, Sanja wanting to work fast, and obviously the pitch clock is involved in that, but just needs to gather himself a little bit. And now 3-0 and oh, and in danger of another walk to tie the game. And outside ball four, and we're tied at three. And LSU has scored three runs in the inning with one hit. And the Bulldogs are going to have to get somebody down to the bullpen. Milam, the ninth man to bat in the inning. Five walks. Tied at three, the freshman and second baseman. 0 for 2 today.
And now one and two. Well, he got way ahead of Travinsky. Couldn't put him away. He was ahead one, two in that count. And grounded foul outside the back at first. Well, big spot here. LSU has tied it up. They've got them loaded. The one, two. And Milam making Gerangelo work a little harder. In the air on the infield. And Mershon makes Bulldogs did all their damage in the bottom of the first. LSU's done all their damage in the top of this inning. The guy on the mound right there, Thatcher Hurd, has seemed to have straightened things out. Well, he's retired seven in a row, Charlie. I would say that qualifies as straightening things out. Ten of the last 11 batters, and that one was a two-out walk in the second. Here's Johnny Long. He popped out to the second baseman in the second inning. A big swing, and now the count 0 2. LSU with three runs on five hits, State with three runs on three hits. Everything coming in the first inning. The 0 2. Outfield and infield playing straight away to Johnny Long. Two for seven on the weekend. And now three and two. Well, State had his difficulties in the top of the first inning with control. It was a leadoff walk that he got it all started in the top half of the fifth. And now three, two to Johnny Long. And that's a leadoff walk in the bottom of the fifth. Yeah, you hear the term track man. A lot of people, what is track man? Track man is a, a software system that's at all the ballparks now that you can 13 zero. 13 of the 14. 13 to 14. In this league. And so you can really hone in on strike zones. You can see the RPMs of pitchers and the thing you, you see today about Thatcher Hurd of the RPMs and the movement of his slider and his breaking ball. Exit velocity, launch angle, vertical break is all great tools and analytics for us baseball nerds. And I've, we've gotten a couple tweets and texts and people asking about track men. Those pitches that Gerangelo threw to Travinsky both shown as balls that were really close. One low, one outside. The 0 1. Breaking ball, a little soft fly ball out in the right field. Second baseman Milam going back. He'll make the play, and that's out number one. Rashawn 0 for 2 today. A couple strikeouts looking. First one was a breaking ball on a 3 2 pitch, and then he looked at the fastball on a 3 2 pitch to end the second inning. One out, one on in the bottom of the fifth and a tie game.
Oh, just off the plate. Big spot for the Bulldogs. The bats have been more or less dormant since the bottom of the first. They have the leadoff walk. Ripped in the right field, and that's going to drop for a base hit. And the fourth hit for State of the game, the first since the first inning. And now two aboard with one out, and Dakota Jordan coming to the play, the first hit of the day for Mershon. So Mershon drops a hit in the right field. They will not hold him at first. With the shift on, more or less to DJ. Milam up the middle. Jordan, a fly out the right field in the first. He struck, actually hit a ground ball to the shortstop, Braswell, in the third. So 0 for 2, a fly out and a ground out. First and second, the 1 0. He's like an important pitch here for her. Now, we've seen him battle back after falling behind in counts. But a dangerous pitch to put one over the middle. There's a shot to center field. Ranging back in the ballpark. Not going to haul this one. Home run number 10 for Dakota Jordan. And State has a 6-3 lead. Well, a dangerous pitch on 2-0. and oh. That one actually was at the bottom of the zone. Jordan hits a really good pitch here and then just drives it 416 feet to dead center field. In a situation there, Bart, you see so many times on a 2-0 count, a pitcher will feel like they've got to give in with a fastball. That wasn't the case right there. Dakota Jordan just went and hit a really good pitch and drove it a long ways. 6-3 game. So State, after giving up the lead in the top half of the inning, get the three runs right back. Then the 1-0. Charlie, you, you talk to coaches all the time, especially hitting coaches, and we got a good friend, Marcus Timms, who's a hitting coach of the Chicago White Sox now. He's been in the big leagues a long time as a hitting coach, and he was like, hey, one of the biggest things as a hitter is you got to start understanding your scouting report. That ball ripped foul. And it's not just about the scouting report of the guy on the mound, but it's also what, what they think about you. What your scouting report is to them. And so that's the situation for Dakota Jordan. You've got to know your scouting report because I'm a fastball guy, and he may not give in on that 2-0 fastball right here. And he was sitting dead red on slider all the way. Here's a 2-1. That ball is mashed. See you later. My goodness. Back to back. The fourth home run for Hunter Hines. That ball just went 430 feet. Oh, my. Well, that woke the dude up. Well, and that's what the Bulldog fans wanted to see. Dakota Jordan and Hunter Hines hitting back-to-back -back in this lineup, and this one is absolutely torched. Was the old Bull Durham. He throws me the breaking ball. I'm going to take it downtown. And now Isaac bats. We couldn't check the swing. Isaac had a two run double in the first. Pop out to the second baseman in the third. He's one for two. The ballpark is livening up a little bit. A three-run home run by Dakota Jordan, a solo shot by Hunter Hines. And that pitch to Hines was 
on the outside and the very outside part of the plate. He just took the outside pitch and pulled it. That ball hit him to center field, and everybody oozing eyes, but he got under it. And Bingham out there, he'll haul that one in as Isaac hits the towering fly ball for out number two of the fifth. Feel better. The pitching improved, but just the ability to compete and answer the way they've done here today, the way they did yesterday. And people are going to ooh and ah on that one. That, that's just a ball that got away from her. That was not a fastball. That was. That was intended to be a slider that uh, the old adage backed up on him. Yeah, and that one just got away from him. Downs has hit two balls really hard. Doubled over the bag at third in the first and he drove in a run. And then hit a hot shot backhand side of Tommy White at third base his last time up. He's hit a couple balls hard today. He tried to stay in with breaking ball on the count three and up. Well, on a spot here where Downs, you just like to extend the inning. And in there for a strike. Four run bottom of the fifth. That ball hit well in the center field. It's going to drop in for a base hit for Aaron Downs, who continues to have a really good weekend. That's his fifth hit on the weekend, and it keeps the inning alive for Logan Kohler. Well, Aaron Downs, since coming into the lineup for Mississippi State, I think a lot of people thought it might be a spot start, but he has shown no intentions of giving up his playing time. Kohler over two, granted out to the first baseman his last time up. He had four hits in the first two games this weekend. His crowd had been kind of settled in. Dakota Jordan and Hunter Hines waking them up. And lifted in the air down the left field line. And slicing. Will it stay in play? It will. And it's the third baseman on the left field. Appear four straight righties due to hit. Well, Larson let off the fifth with a walk. LSU sent five, uh, sent nine to the plate in the fifth inning. Scored three runs on one hit. Had five walks in there. Gerangelo pitched well today and kind of ran into a wall there in the fifth. And that ball lined in the left center field, and that's going to split the outfielders. And Larson, the freshman, on his way to second. A leadoff double for LSU in the sixth inning. It looked like Downs was fooled a little bit by this ball in left field. Took a little bit of a flat angle. He took a few steps and then realized, hey, this ball's going to split us. And now Braswell, who's double in the fifth, really changed the mood. Braswell, two for two today, single to left field, dropped the ball in front of the left fielder downs in the third and split the outfielders with an RBI double to right center field in the fifth. Leadoff double in the sixth inning after State scores four times in the bottom of the fifth to take the lead back at 7-3. 
He tried to find the inside corner and stayed inside. He tried to break him ball away and account now two and one. Shawkey from Door, Michigan. Door, Michigan in the western part of the state of Michigan. It's really a township. Just under 8,000. There's a strike call. Threw that Frisbee up there. And now two and two. Door between Grand Rapids and Kalamazoo, just south of Grand Rapids, Michigan. Braswell started his career at South Carolina. Runner at second. We'll look back at second base. No, we're going to have. Oh, a balk is called. And Chris Lamonis is going to come out with some spirited discussion here. He's asking, what did he do? Talking to the first base umpire, Joe Harris. Let's take one more look here. Got a little fumble at the top right here. It's almost like he was trying to take his foot off the back of the mound and the cleat may have hung. So the balk moves the runner to third. Boy, that's a nice job of spoiling a pitch right there. Schulke coming overhand with it. Nobody out, the 2-2. Swing and a miss, 68. Well, to Braswell's defense, you don't practice a whole lot the 68 was spin. You see, yeah, uh, there, you, there go. you go. Cleek called. Good angle there. Now back to the top of the order. Here's Mac Bingham lined out to the third baseman. Kohler his last time up. He's 0 for 3 today. Runner at third. One out now. Now bullpen game for State. Tyler Davis on the right, the left-hander. Forsyth, the right-hander on the left. Forsyth only a couple of appearances this year, but he's looked good the time that he's been in. No oh, two. Mm. Knocked down by Johnny Long, the catcher. Oh, almost hit him on the 2 pitch. After Bingham, you got Tommy White due up next. Yeah. Gonna try to catch the bottom of the zone. And now two and two. Swing and a miss at the slider. And a couple of strikeouts for Cam Shawkey after giving up the leadoff double. Well, they're so unconventional, you don't always know what pitch he's trying to throw, but it's got a lot of movement to it. And that's a big strikeout. And so now two down, but a dangerous couple of hitters to navigate. Tommy White was intentionally walked his last time up. And able to check the swing. 
Single at the left field in the third. Yeah, able to check that swing. Well, you look for Shawkey to stay away right here. First base open. Now that one just runs back into the middle of the plate. They threw it 69 up there, and you saw Tommy White. He kind of had to double clutch to foul that pitch off. In today's world of velocity, trying to time something up at 68 is not easy. Now he'll widen that stance out. And well, really just exaggerating there. You can see taking the two-strike approach. 2-2. Two -two. Hits that ball well into center field, and that ball is gone. A home run for Tommy White. His third of the weekend. And LSU cuts the lead in half at 7-5. to five. Now, Tommy White hits this one 404. So much for two strike approach, but that's just the power he has. He spreads out, chokes up a little bit, and then still hits it over 400 feet. Charlie, you could kind of see that coming when he stepped into the box and was two strikes. He just winded it out and made it all arms and stayed back on it. And a two run home run makes it seven to five. And here's Jared Jones. When you go back to one of the things that makes Tommy White such a great hitter is his ability to make adjustments within the at bat. Some guys can adjust game to game. Some guys can adjust at bat to at bat. But why the guy that can adjust in the middle of the at bat? And he made quite an adjustment. And that ball hit in the air in the right field. Out to the track. And Jordan is there as that ball just stays in the ballpark in front of the 380 sign. Chance over to a fly out to right field, a ground out to the shortstop. And Christian Little, the Vanderbilt transfer, drops a breaking ball in there for a strike. A little working ahead. Nine strikeouts and four walks on the season for Christian Little. The one, two. Eighth appearance. Three runs on nine hits. Teams hitting 300 against him. Have not hit a home run off of him. Gotten a couple doubles. Swing and a miss. And a strikeout of Bryce Chance to start the sixth inning. Yeah, a really nice pitch there. Goes with. You see Chance fooled by it. Now the nine spot hitter, Johnny Long, will hit for the Bulldogs. And he grounds that one into left field for a base hit. Johnny Long with the single to left field. 
And the Bulldogs will turn the lineup over and go back to the top of the order with Amani Lair. Amani, one for two today, popped out to the second baseman down the right field line his last time up. You start to look ahead for little. This becomes an important at bat here. As he wants to end this inning without giving Dakota Jordan a chance to swing it with guys on base. But to do that, he's got to get a double play or retire Larry and Mershon. A uh, swing at the breaking ball down and away. And now two and one. And it drops that one in there. Now the count's two and two. Hey, threw in three straight sliders. And Little with a couple strikeouts here in the sixth. And That's here's a David Mershon. That's a really good sequence of pitching here by Little. And you like that. So many times you see pitchers outsmart themselves, but he stuck with what was working because Larry had given every indication he was going to have trouble with that pitch, and he just keeps going to it. Mershon single to right field back in the fifth, right in front of the Dakota Jordan three-run home run. State scored three in the first, led 3 nothing all the way to the top of the fifth. LSU, with the help of five walks and one double in the top of the fifth, tied it at three. And then State bounced back with four of their own, back-to-back -back home runs by Dakota Jordan and Hunter Hines. And there's a throwaway over at first, but no way that you can advance not a far run over there to that wall the second baseman Milam over there to collect it Johnny Long can't take second and this gets a very fortunate kick for LSU because it takes a hop right back to the second baseman so many times you see that get down to the pin and after state scored the four runs in the bottom of the fifth to take a 7-3 lead LSU with a two-out, two-run home run by Tommy White. First base open, State elected to pitch to him, and White burned the Bulldogs. The strike called outside corner in the count one and two. Well, Mershon has struck out looking twice here today, so you'd have to be thinking he's in swing mode here. If I'm little, I'm not sure I even throw anything in the zone. Maybe a breaking pitch down. And through the left side, a base hit. Long will stop at second base. Well, you just look at the point of thinking you want to stay away from the middle of the plate. You got a guy you think is going to be swinging, and Mershon gets a center cut pitch, and he just pushes it past the shortstop Braswell, and now Dakota Jordan will get a chance to hit, but we may have a trip to the bullpen here. Let's see. We've certainly got a trip to the mound. Jordan homered his last time up. And a fastball at 96 that just caught the bottom of the zone.
And if you're little here, you've got to guard against wanting to overthrow. A big swing, and that's now one and two. Line drive right field, that's a base hit. Long as the ball gets past the right fielder. And here we go. Two runs will score. DJ ends up at third. And State back out in top by four at nine to five. Well, so much is made out of Dakota Jordan's power, but this is just being a header. Being willing to go the other way with the ball. And it was destined to drive in one, but once it gets past Neal out in right field, that allows Mershon to get around and score. And now we're going to see the intentional pass to Hunter Hines. It'll go in the book as a single for Dakota Jordan. And charge the error to the right fielder, Brady Neal. Letting that ball get past. One run was going to score. And so with that, Dakota Jordan only gets credit with one RBI in that sequence. Hines walks. Here's Isaac. Runners at the corners. Well, second time today that Hines has been intentionally walked. Isaac made LSU pay for it the first time back in the first inning. Drove in a pair with a double. So now Little's missed on a couple and Isaac in a hitter's count. And how about that? That was a big breaking pitch on 2 and 0. Couldn't get the chase, and now it's 3 and 0. Downs is on deck. He's two for three. And the 3 0 outside, and a four pitch walk to load the bases. And hey, Charlie, we've seen that so far today from State in the top of the fifth inning. Walking Tommy White to load the bases. Season and now this season getting all his work out of the bullpen. So a face Aaron Downs with the bases loaded. Helmers on the season has walked three guys in seven innings pitched. He's allowed just one hit. Downs an RBI double in the first. Hit a hot shot that Tommy White made a nice play on in the fourth and single to center field in the fifth. And there's a rip and he pulled it foul and that one's going to go out of the ballpark but way foul. Jumped on that one and the counts even. Yeah, and take a look. Helmers is pitching at the very far right of the rubber. Trying to create some horizontal break. Can make it tough to stay inside it. And now after missing with the first pitch. Comes back with a foul ball and then a swing and a miss. And then try to locate the corner. And it's almost like you said, Charlie, standing on the edge of that pitching rubber, throwing three quarter. It's almost like a sidearm type of angle you create for the right handed hitter. Hot chop, third baseman, picked by Tommy White, throw it over and pull it off the bag and a run will score.
And White wanted to come home with that ball, I think. He and Travinsky having a somewhat spirited discussion with each other. Let's see. No, he was looking first base all the way. And Third hit of the day for Aaron Downs. Jordan scores to make it 10 to 5, and that may be all for Helmers. Logan Kohler due up. You got a left-hander coming to the plate, and LSU's. Nick Bronzini. Well, this is the situation that LSU has had the past couple of years with Riley Cooper. They could bring Cooper in from the pen as a really good left-handed guy to match up. Then off the mid of the catcher. Nobody working down in the pen, so. Bronzini will have to handle it for a while. Of course, if he retires Kohler, he'll be done for the inning. In the center field, that's a base hit. Two runs will score. A two out RBI single for Logan Kohler, and the Bulldogs have done the damage this weekend with two out RBI. Now well, Kohler coming up with his first hit of the ball game, and it's a big one. And two out hitting for Mississippi State here today. It's like all weekend. Bulldogs seven out of 12 hitting with two outs. Six out of nine with runners in scoring position. And now the 10th man to bat in the inning. Five run bottom of the sixth inning for State. Bryce Chance led off the inning against Christian Little and struck out swinging. Runners to the corners now. A 12-5 Bulldog lead. You know, the thing that has been so impressive, and you know that Chris Lamonis will have to be happy about, is the way that his team has answered everything that's been thrown at him here today. Right at the second baseman, picked out of the, on the short hop by Milam. He'll race to the bag, and that will end the inning. Chance hit it well. But he's pitched that way. Four, five, and six. Pearson, Travinsky, and Neal. And first pitch swinging, and there's Pearson with a line drive to left field, and that's his third hit today. Boy, it's been a good day for Pearson's batting average. He had a bunt single in the second inning. He went the other way, lined the ball in the left field in the fourth. And now Travinsky at the plate. He drew a bases loaded walk his last time up. 0 for 2 today, a fly out to center field, a strikeout swinging in the fourth. Hits that ball a mile high. Who gets it? Hunter Hines calling for it, and he makes the catch. Well, Travinsky had better be glad that that ball was called. Yeah, because that ball, if it hits was the way it had spun, it was going to be a fair ball. And Travinsky did not move out of the batter's box, and if that ball dropped, and all of a sudden you could play yourself into a double play because there's no such thing as a infield fly in that situation, of course, with just a runner at first. And looking back at it, if Hines had known that, 
that's probably the play to make is just to let that ball hit in fair territory and then you know that sounds good in a theoretical <laughs> perspective the guys sitting in the press box yeah i know but the circus music starts playing once that happens <laughs> that ball was a mile high pearson raising that bang hours he's raised it 37 points today well up to 263. So just outside Brady Neal, the batter, had a bases loaded walk in the fifth inning. He's 0 for 2. Fly out to center field and a strikeout, 2 1. This is as engaged a crowd as Mississippi State's had in a while here this weekend. It's living on every pitch. 2 2. And fouled away. A great crowd yesterday, just under 14,000. And huge outfield crowd yesterday. LSU jumped out early. Led 9-1 to one after the third inning. And hit it the other way. Ranging back is Aaron Downs. He'll make the catch for out number two. Well, well Downs, I'm sorry, Bart. Downs has to make an adjustment on this ball. He did not originally read it as one that was going to be hit as deep as it was, and it didn't have that big crack of the bat that got everybody's attention, but he makes the adjustment. He gets back, ultimately keeps his feet, and two down. The switch hitting Milam will hit from the right. Steven Milam, the second baseman, 0 for 3 today. A couple pop outs to the shortstop. And to the third baseman, Kohler. He'll take the short throw. And across, <laughs> it's only, <laughs> only needed one. <laughs> State trying to get the practice of turning the twin killing. And in with two outs. Here's Johnny Long to lead off for State. Bronzini back out there. Nick Bronzini. Pitch to a couple batters in the six. There's a line drive out the left field and Pearson ranging back. He'll reach up a couple steps from the track. Johnny Long flies out and one down in the seventh. Well, still six outs to get, but Mississippi State has not beaten LSU in a series here in Starkville since 2003. Oh, a strike called, a breaking ball. That looked like it may have been down. Amani Larry. One for three today. Rolls out with left side. Tommy White up with it and flips it across in time for the out. Nice play by Tommy White. And two quick outs. Well, you think back to 2003. State had Paul Mahalam. You had Steve Gendron. The guy's been texting the, during the broadcast today. Jonathan Papelbon was on that 2003 team. Start thinking back to all the former players that stay engaged with both of these programs. Even a few years ago when Jake Mangum was making the chase to become the all-time hits leader in the SEC, Will Furness, who had that great career at LSU, now a doctor over in Nacogdoches, Texas, coming back over and was at the ballpark that weekend. There's so much respect between these two programs that's been going back decades. A chop back to the mound. Bronzini makes the throw and he works a quick one, two, three, bottom of the seventh inning. So
Yeah, first pitch a strike here in the top of the eighth inning. And Ashton Larson leading off for LSU in the eighth inning. Eight, nine, and one. Larson, then Braswell, and then Mac Bingham. Against Tyler Davis. Swing and a miss. And the first strikeout for Tyler Davis. Well, nice pitch by Davis that time. Gets the chase on a ball just out of the zone. You start playing with a lead like this, it becomes very important. That out number one. In there for a strike. Yeah, and throwing strikes matters, and Davis has done a good job of that so far. And right on cue, misses outside. Two and one the count. Down the right field side and slicing. Now we'll go down on the berm. And a count two and two to Braswell. Two for three today, single to left field in the third and then double to right center field in the fifth. And struck out swinging in the sixth inning. And just off the plate. Now the count full. And a one out walk to the nine hole hitter. And here's Bingham. Mac Bingham. 0 for 4 today. Struck out a couple of times. Hit a ball hard back in the fifth inning and lined out to the third baseman, Kohler. Too. And there is strike three. Bingham strikes out for the third time today. Two strikeouts in the inning. Now two going and a runner at first. And Tommy White coming to the plate. And now, well, Jay Johnson has just about won a, worn a hole in the turf, headed out to meet with home plate umpire Scott Klein. And Tommy White, as he was coming out, was asking something to Klein or perhaps sharing an opinion or two, not in a confrontational way at all, but right after he took the batter's box, Jay Johnson came out. And you get the idea that it's as much sport as anything. As you said earlier, Bart, just slow things down now and then. Tommy White 
Two for three today. Scored a couple of runs. Homered his last time up in the sixth inning. See the discussion that was taking place. It's another swing and a miss. Well, I'm not sure what Scott Klein saw, but he felt so strongly about it that he decided to run a new baseball to the mound. And maybe that's what they were talking about. I wonder, and I didn't see this, if Davis was going to his mouth when handling the baseball and not wiping first. One and two, the count. <laughs> Try to bust him in with a fastball. <laughs> and now two, two. Runner at first will be moving on the 3 2 pitch. <laughs> Fouled it back. Fouled away again, and we'll do it. Uh, that one at 93, so Davis kind of amped up here on a couple. He's gone 92, 93 in his last couple. Let's see if he goes with a breaking pitch here. There goes the runner. Ground ball out to short. And that will end the inning. So Tommy White, Jordan to lead off. Here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Dakota Jordan and Hunter Hines and Connor Heizak. Bronzini got the final out of the sixth inning and worked a quick one, two, three, seven. Jordan had an RBI single his last time up. The ball got past Brady Neal and all the way to the right field wall. Four RBIs today for Dakota Jordan. 3-1. And a leadoff walk for Dakota Jordan here in the bottom of the eighth inning. No pitch misses upstairs. And now we'll get a left on left matchup for Bronzini. As Hunter Hines steps in. Hines has a home run today, a solo home run, and yanks that ball foul down the right field side and out of play. Homer twice in the game on Friday. He's been intentionally walked twice today. Fouled it back, and it counts 0-2. So 78 on the first pitch, and then 90 on that one. Changing speed to Hines.
And able to check the swing of the breaking ball down and away. Ronnie Teague, the third base umpire. Well, after today, State will be back at home on Tuesday night against Memphis and then on the road for seven in a row at A&M, then a midweek game at Samford, and then at Florida in week three of SEC play. Really tough three weeks to open up SEC play for the Bulldogs. Couldn't check the swing there. Hunter Hines goes around and strikes out swinging. First strikeout for Bronzini, and one down for Connor Hyzak. LSU... They get to go to Florida next week. Yep, they're going to get Florida at home next week. Yeah, excuse me, Florida at home, and then they go to Arkansas and host Vanderbilt and then go to Tennessee. So. Yeah. Well, there's no rest in this league for Hopefully. any team. LSU will be back at home on Tuesday night. They'll take on... Lane Burroughs, a good friend down at La Tech. Lane's off to a good start this year, 15 and 5 down in Ruston. Yeah, Lane Burroughs has put some good teams on the field down at Tech. No one to Isaac. Yeah, Lane's got a regional host down there. Got the new ballpark down in Ruston. 1-1. One, one. Sawed him off. Hit it to the right side. Tough play. Underhand toss and not in time. So Isaac gets down the line well. Yeah, Napole comes and gets this ball. He does everything you can do. We may let's see. Well, this was bang, bang. Comes, shovels with the glove. Isaac. He looks like he's there. Why are you talking about Lane Burroughs? You think about the staff that John Cohen had here, Nick Mingione, who came in with that group, head coach at Kentucky, Butch Thompson, head coach at Auburn. I tell you, Lane Burroughs is a, a top shelf coach in his own right. And here's Aaron Downs, he'll bat. Three hits today to the left side. Braswell, long throw across, and he's safe. Boy, that's a couple of times today that Downs has gotten down the right line really well to beat out a throw. And Jay Johnson is going to challenge this. Back-to-back -back plays. LSU is challenging the call of safe at first base. Previous play is under review. Can you hear me now? <laughs> All right, here we go. Well, they're going to wave Logan Kohler over, tell him to get away from the LSU dugout. Couldn't tell off the one view. Here we go. After we, the call of safe, it stands. So the call stands. LSU It'll be an infield single for game. Aaron Downs and his fourth hit today, and the bases are loaded. Well, let's see. Again, an effort play by Downs. That heel may it's have been. It's just tough to see. Yeah. And again, you go back to even be considering here on a Sunday. Left on left with Logan Kohler. Two run single back in the sixth inning. And that's what gave State a 12 5 lead. 
And now 2-0. Oh. Well, and this becomes a really big at bat, too, when you start to think about how that unfolds, Bart, because if Kohler can reach, even if by walk you now put the winning run in scoring position. And there for a strike, and it counts 2-1. Nobody in the LSU bullpen. This is Bronzini's. And now three and one. It lifts it foul. And out of play, and the count's now full. <laughs> you knew that was a pitch that. Kohler got a strike. He was going to want to drive. Did a good job keeping it on the outside part of the plate. Swings and misses at the breaking ball way out of the zone. And the second out of the eighth inning. Well, this is a situation. Kohler just a little over anxious. This big sweeper sweeps way outside the zone. And now two outs for Bryce Chance. Chance homered in the game yesterday. Hit his second home run. LSU will have the meat of the order due up in the ninth. Three, four, and five. And the strike caught at the top of the zone. And it's 0-2. The Bronx cheers. Asking Scott Klein where that one was. <laughs> Go to Jordan over at third and let off the inning with a walk. And that is a fair ball inside the bag at third. Two runs are going to score. And it's 14 to 5 on the two run double by Bryce Chance. And that is the fourth double of this ball game that the Bulldogs have put just inside the bag at third. Two run double by Chance. 14 to 5, and now the winning run is over at third. Down stopped at third base. All right, so let me just ask you this with Tommy White playing back at third, you got a guy that bunts really well. Man, it hit him. And now the bases are loaded, and Amani Larry will come to the plate. Well, Bulldogs up 14 to 5. Would like to remove all doubt here. And Amani Larry could send us all home. State has 41 hits this weekend. 16 in the game on Friday, 10 yesterday, and 15 today.
They beat LSU two out of three in Baton Rouge last year. They won, won the 16 series down at LSU as well. Of course, one of the big differences between Friday night and today, Bulldogs finding more extra base hits. The 1-1. One, one. And now three and one. And Bronzini's got to throw a strike. Got to throw a striker and it ends it on a bases loaded walk. And a crowd coming alive. And ball high and inside and Mississippi State Yo, ain't no battle within the fight We can't ignore against our own demons On the internal war from the dust that plague us To the fears that bind We're that constant struggle in the depths of our mind The voices of insecurity they scream so loud But we'll drown them out with our courage proud Through the trials and tribulations We'll stand tall in the face of adversity We'll never fall It's a struggle within against our own doubt But we'll fight through the darkness and find our route In the battle against ourselves we'll find our might And emerge victorious in the shining light It's a journey of self-discovery A quest for truth to break free from the chains of our own youth We'll push beyond limits and reach for the sky In the fight against ourselves We'll never say die through the ups and downs We'll persevere Overcoming obstacles without fear For the greatest battle we'll ever face Is the one within in this human race It's a struggle within Against our own doubt But we'll fight through the darkness and find our route In the battle against ourselves we'll find our might and emerged victorious in the shining light. So as we face the challenges that lie ahead, let's remember the strength that lies within instead. For in the fight against ourselves, we'll find our truth. And in the struggle within, we'll find our youth. Yeah. In the melody of life, let's take a stand against our own demons hand in hand. For in the battle against ourselves, we'll rise and conquer our fears, reaching for the skies. <laughs>